received this one, I've turned this one down, and so on and so forth. I haven't received anything I've turned down. Now, when these requests come in from out there, let's, uh, let's get them in channels and let's get them to me so I can see something that's coherent. I read these statements this afternoon and I couldn't make it out and I had, a, I had a language expert and he couldn't make it out. We tried to analyze it on the conversations uh, uh, that you gave to Vicky. And we just uh, couldn't find out what to, what they were really talking about. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Ramsey said, "Well, we'll we'll uh, look at it." And it didn't look like to me it was a recommendation. Now, if uh, uh, General Hill is a good man, as I understood it, and uh, we're rather relying on his recommendations since he's an adjutant general, is that correct? Yes, sir. We are, however. All right. Just tell him then to to make it official, and when he when he gets to from him and let it go to the proper military person, if that's Wheeler or, or whoever it is, then the acting Secretary of Defense, just let him approve it and get it to me and I'll give you a decision on anything you recommend that's there that's within five minutes. I'm not gonna send a bunch of prosecutors out there. I'm not gonna send anybody out there that the state doesn't ask for. I don't wanna completely admit that city government, state government, county government is impotent in this country and that I'm a dictator. And uh, if uh, the governor of the state asks me and says, as Wallace did, says I'm financially unable, or I have no power to do this, then I'll move in two minutes. Yes, sir. Now, if General Hill says that he's got to have this or that, as they usually do, they usually throw it all over the federal government. They couldn't move a, a constable across town. Uh, but uh, I'd like for them to do what they can on their own, but what they can't, why well, then, uh, uh, we'll be glad to do it, but I want I want to see what I'm approving and rejecting, and uh, uh, I I uh, things that Jack's tell me not. What was it you said that I had rejected? Uh, now he says I've rejected the prepositioning of planes. I have never had a request that they be prepositioned. I've seen two conversations from you saying it'll take 16 hours, and it'll take eight hours, and it'll take nine hours. If uh, the governor is asking for planes to be prepositioned and anticipating that he'll be calling these other people, or General Wheeler, in anticipation of what he might be required to do, is requesting me to do it. I want to know it. Yes. Sir. And I'll act on it in five minutes. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. President, on the, uh, not, not talking about that now, but on the request that, uh, for the aircraft to move the National Guardsmen down. Those requests are coming through channels from General Hill to 6th Army to General Abrams, who is the Vice Chief of Staff of the Army, whom General Wheeler has designated as the point of contact in the Department of Defense. That's good. General Abrams is checking the, any request that he gets to make sure that there is a need for that request. Be sure that they are utilizing all the facilities they have and if they are using all of their own facilities and they have no other way to do it and they request it of us, then it's approved right now. You just get it to me and I'll initially it so damn quick it'll make your head swim. Yes, sir, and that, and, and we, uh, we have, uh, General Abrams is doing that with every one. He uh, has shown them, for example, in their early requests for aircraft to help lift their troops that they had the ability to do it themselves, and they did it themselves. That's what that's what I was afraid of. I told Jack, they're going to ask us to do everything. I found that out after 35 years, and we want to do what we have to, but we don't want to uh, just usurp their power. No, sir, and I have asked General Abrams not to come forward with anything unless he has checked it out and is convinced that it's a firm requirement that they do not have the capability to do it themselves. The things that uh, they've been given so far are the airlift, which uh, he is convinced that they need, and which General Hill requested through channels that I talked to Secretary McNamara about, and went back to Jack. And secondly, the uh, finer items like uh, some tear gas and food rations and things like that that are being issued to the Guard troops out of Fort MacArthur. Uh, in California. All right, that's, that's good. The only things that, that's uh, good, and these these extra plane jacks just tell me about. They approved. Now you get anything else to me on that teletype, and we get it very promptly, and I'll act on it very promptly. Or if it, if it's not fast enough, 
You'll just call and say, we hereby request so-and-so and tell me who's requesting it. Yes, sir. And make it a request, not just a conversation saying that it needs 16 hours. Yes, now, does anybody want us to pre-position these planes now? Uh, General Abrams and I have been talking about that, Mr. President, and uh, Hale Champion called here. He is Governor Brown's man in California. He, what do you mean? What what kind of man? Well, he's, he's Sleep really with him, the man. most effective man in the state government. He is the man that Governor Brown uh, told us to deal with uh, as soon as he hit the United States soil today. Uh, he said... What's his, what's his title? Uh, I don't know his exact title, whether he's special assistant to the governor or... Mm. Go ahead. He's director of finance, Mr. President. Go ahead. Uh, and incidentally, and from my experience during this day, he is the most effective person out there right now until Governor Brown arrives. He called me early this evening and said that they are throwing everything they have in terms of National Guardsmen, state police, highway police, city police, and even deputy sheriffs and neighboring city police into Los Angeles. That they hoped and believed that they could handle it in Los Angeles, but that they could not handle anything else of any substantial nature that broke out elsewhere in the state, and that if it did, he felt that they would be forced to have the governor come to you with a request for federal troops. Uh, I talked to General Abrams about that, and we have just been trying to plan out where troops would come from if they requested it. There is uh, no formal request to you, and I'll go back to General Abrams and ask him for his assessment of this situation to reduce that reaction time. I talked to Jack and told him I was, uh, it was my opinion that this was something we had to start thinking about now. And I'll go back to General Abrams. Well, I'm for it, and if Champion will say that uh, they anticipate that they may have to call on us, our troops and would we take steps to be prepared if they had to. Then if Abrams approves that, uh, you get your acting Secretary of Defense to say to me that's what they want, then we will just at that moment tell them to work around the clock tonight to get their planes ready and get everything ready to move on the minimum notice. Yes, I think that would be wise. I think that would be wise if you could stay out of the papers on it. Yes, sir. I'm not sure that uh, that uh, we should ask uh, uh, Champion to request this. I think it might be better for me to talk to General Abrams and to Secretary McNamara about this, because if uh, if the state government knows we're doing anything like this at this time, then they might uh, they might start uh, to think we're going to do everything, as you mentioned, Mr. President. Yeah, well, I don't want them to do that. But I thought if Champion just said that what he well, if he said what uh, you said just reported him as saying... Yes, he did, sir. All right, then I'd just go on on that basis and tell these commanders to just... Uh, I'll let them know whether they're going to Los Angeles or Vietnam. i just tell them to, to position their planes, get ready, and not, not get out what it's going for. Yes, sir. And they can do that where you can move them on pretty short notice. And if it does, keeps on going after he's there eight or ten hours, well, somebody's going to have to move in there. Yes, sir. And I'll talk to General Abrams and Secretary Mack. All right. Well, where's Bob? In Boston? Bob is up at uh, Martha's Vineyard, Mr. President, but I've talked to him uh, once this evening uh, before, and uh, Ramsey has talked to him about a... Uh, now, have you, do you, what is this business that we keep uh, recommending the Department of Justice get out there? It's the last thing I want to do, uh, if I can avoid it. Uh, Mr. President, our feeling was here that someone who is our man, who has the interest of the federal government and yourself as distinguished from either the interests of the state, which Governor Brown and his people naturally have, and Governor Brown's interest, or Mayor Yorty's interest, which his people have, or the Adjutant General's interest, which he has and his people have. If we had someone whom we could rely on, who could give us some assessments of what's going on out there, we would be better off. It was our experience in uh, in the in Oxford and Tuscaloosa and Selma that this was very valuable, and uh, it does not have to be Ramsey Clark. I don't. I'm afraid of anybody from Justice 
for the reason of the implication. It looks like that uh, there's going to be a court order. All of those had court orders. And they, that's justice has got to enforce them. But they are prosecution people. And I won't keep it as far away from that implication as I can uh, unless it gets to that point where they're violating a lot of federal laws. Uh, can't we rely on Hill? Uh, well, uh, I'm not, I, I think Hill is a very good man, Mr. President. I think that Hill's interest is, uh, is the interest of the, Al of the California National Guard and of, uh, and of Governor Brown. Now, there's not necessarily any conflict between those interests and our I, interests. I wouldn't think so now. Uh, however, uh, uh, there, uh, he'll be much more interested in protecting Governor Brown than he will be in protecting, uh, the President. And, uh, it's difficult uh, not to have someone out there that's our own uh, that we can talk to. Now, maybe we can uh, come up with someone that's not in the Justice Department uh, whom we could send out there. And uh, let, let me talk to uh, Lee about that, and let me talk to Bob McNamara and, and Ramsey about it. Do you all have any uh, heads of uh, uh, your services out there? Don't you have some two or three star generals around there somewhere? Do. We have a three-star general up in San Francisco. Uh, 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 however, if we moved him down uh, to uh, to uh, Fort MacArthur, say in Los Angeles, it might attract a tremendous amount of attention. They might think we're going to move the regular army in with that kind of rank. Uh, unfortunately, the, the Ramsey does not have a great deal of confidence in the. Uh, U.S. attorney out there. He's a good man, but he thinks he's a little too headstrong and, and too inclined to want to get involved in things rather than be discreet. The only other person we have in the Los Angeles area is a regional director of the Office of Emergency Planning. Uh, we do not uh, know him, although we've heard he's a good man. Uh, that, that was Buford say about him. Well, I'll get in touch with Buford and ask what he what he says about him, he may be a man that we can use out there for this. I'll call Buford now, Mr. President. And uh, I'd have somebody to keep in touch with Otis Chandler. He's pretty reliable and pretty able fellow. Do you know Pardon him? me, Mr. President? Do you know Otis Chandler? Yes, sir. Why don't you call him and talk to him? All right, Mr. President. Just ask him what his assessment is. Tell him you're talking to me, and I want to keep up with it. And what does he think ought to be done and so forth? He's a pretty able fellow. I'll do that, sir. Okay. All right. Anything else? Uh, no, that's all, Mr. President. That's everything. I'll talk to Bob and... Uh, When's Bob coming in? Tuesday? Uh, no, he'll be in uh, tomorrow, Mr. President. Cy will be in town uh, about 11 o'clock tonight. Um, Who's acting in there, Abs? Uh, it's, it's probably uh, Secretary Nitsa, Mr. President, because uh, both uh, Secretary Resor and uh, Secretary Zucker are also out of town. Something we'll clean up with this memorandum that we'll get out Monday. Uh, I think, sir, that uh, what we need is a memorandum that says that the head of an agency and the deputy head of an agency cannot be out of town at the same time without permission of the White House, uh, which is the same kind of memorandum that Bob has out in the Defense Department. Uh, I insisted he go, though. I, I know that, sir. Uh, I don't think this is any reflection on him, but we've had trouble finding lots of people They go over and we'll very gradually get them back in next week. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. President, if uh, if Bob agrees with the, and General Abrams uh, recommends Bob agrees with the prepositioning, then... Uh, yes, go ahead. All right, sir. But give me, be sure that you've got the record that they are requesting me to do it. I will, sir. Okay. And uh, we'll have a readout on Governor Brown's press conference when he arrives. We'll pass that on to Jack. All right. All right, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you.